The Pathology Illustration Collection, part of the archives of St Bartholomew's Hospital, contains over 1,800 drawings, paintings and photographs depicting various conditions and diseases. These items provide a vivid insight into two centuries of medical care and medical illustration at the hospital. The collection was officially begun in 1844 by William Alfred Delamotte, librarian at St Bartholomew's Hospital Medical School. At that time, the post of librarian was combined with that of medical artist. Delamotte was the son of the distinguished landscape artist of the same name and had clearly inherited his father's abilities, as can be seen from his illustration of St Bartholomew's Hospital. Traditionally, medical students learned about the appearance and presentation of conditions and diseases by studying specimens in the hospital's pathology museum, which had been in existence since at least 1726. However, not all conditions could be shown using preserved specimens, and so Delamotte began making a series of sketches of surgical specimens such as human tissue removed in operations. These illustrations had the advantage of recording diseased organs, bones and tumours when fresh and in colour. Delamotte also visited the hospital wards to draw patients exhibiting particular conditions. These illustrations were used as reference tools for medical students and staff to show the localised physical effects of disease upon both the external and internal structures of the human body. Medical illustration already had a long world history. While ancient and medieval illustrations largely relied on classical scholarship rather than direct observation, more accurate and detailed drawings based on dissection and increasing knowledge of human anatomy appeared from the Renaissance onwards. Our collection also contains some pieces which predate Delamotte's work. This drawing of the dura mater, the membrane that surrounds the brain and spinal cord, is one of the earliest, drawn on the 1st of December 1819 by a J.G. Shepherd. Thomas Goddard replaced Delamotte as librarian and museum artist in 1852. In 1881, Goddard requested that the job be separated into two roles so that he could focus wholly on his artistic work. That same year, the medical school acquired photographic equipment and Goddard became its first photographer. Photography provided medicine with a speedy method of recording which was more accurate and objective than illustration. From this point, photography began to supersede watercolours and ink drawings. However, the medical profession did have ethical concerns about photographing the exposed human body and about patient identifiability. Some photographs, therefore, show patients with their eyes or faces covered, while others show only the afflicted part of the body. Some photographs in the collection predate Goddard's work. In 1876, Moses Bowness, the noted photographer, farmer and poet, took a series of photographs of the original case of osteitis deformans, a chronic bone disorder first described by Sir James Paget in 1877. This photograph was taken six months before the patient's death. In October 1887, Leonard Portal Mark, a general practitioner who had trained at Barts, was appointed to the post of museum artist on an annual retainer of 20 guineas. He was paid an additional one guinea per image produced. However, Mark's ill health meant that he was often unable to work and so the collection was added to by medical staff and students. As the use of photography increased, the 20 guinea retainer was discontinued, although Mark continued to contribute drawings to the collection until 1908. Developments in diagnostic techniques such as cellular pathology meant that the illustration collection eventually fell into disuse as a reference and teaching resource, although the collection continued to be added to until 1950. However, that wasn't the end of medical illustration at Barts. While photography was ideal for recording the condition of the patient and their subsequent progress in response to treatment, drawings remained invaluable for illustrating aspects of human anatomy and surgical technique. In 1933, the Medical College's anatomy department appointed Zeta Stead as artist and research assistant. Stead had a diploma in fine art, had studied anatomy and histology at King's College London, and was an expert in photomicography. Stead produced illustrations of surgical procedures and pathological specimens, teaching exhibits and even artwork for the anatomy department's Christmas cards. She went on to co-found the Medical Artists Association of Great Britain in 1949, a sign of the increased professionalisation of medical illustration during the 20th century. In 1947, the Medical College established a medical illustration and photography department. The photography section was headed up by Norman K. Harrison, a press photographer who had found a new calling in medical photography when taking pictures of bomb damage and casualties at Barts during the Second World War. As the department continued to expand, the work of medical artists grew to include illustrations for textbooks, educational resources and animation for television and film. 
Meanwhile, technological advances saw medical photography expand to include infrared and ultraviolet radiations, as well as fluorescence, time-lapse and high-speed photography. Today, the Bart's Health Medical Illustration team take photographs and videos of patients, including specialised areas of imaging such as ophthalmic photography. They also carry out general photography projects, provide illustrations for publications and design posters and information for staff and patients. The Pathology Illustration Collection was transferred to Bart's Health Archives in 1985 from the Pathology Museum, now part of Queen Mary University of London. The collection was catalogued, conserved and digitised between 2008 and 2009, with funding from the Wellcome Trust. As well as being works of art in their own right, the illustrations chart the development of medical knowledge and education over two centuries. They are also a vivid record of the common and not so common diseases prevalent in 19th and early 20th century London, such as syphilis, tuberculosis, rickets, smallpox, cholera and typhoid. Of course, these are also images of individual people. While many of the patients depicted remain nameless, others can be identified by cross-referencing with medical case notes, post-mortem reports and museum specimens. Although many records were destroyed in the Second World War, around a third of the individuals in the images are still identifiable from admission registers surviving in the archives, and clinical information for around 200 of the cases exists in published journals and books. The collection also includes images of patients from other hospitals around the world, such as this 1906 watercolour and ink portrait of a patient affected with a skin condition at the Calcutta Medical College. The drawing was donated to the Pathology Museum by the Professor of Medicine and Principal of the College, who was a Bart's alumnus. Drawings like this demonstrate the importance of international networks in medical communication and knowledge. Nowadays, patient consent and confidentiality are paramount in all aspects of healthcare, including medical illustration and photography, but this was not always the case. Many of these historic images raise questions about power and privacy. What was the relationship between patients and clinicians, and between patients and medical artists or photographers? What levels of consent, if any, did the patient have? Were they treated as individuals or just as case studies? And what are the ongoing ethical concerns around curating and displaying historic medical images? These are just some of the considerations facing curators, historians and others when dealing with collections like this. This video shows only a fraction of the images from the Pathology Illustration Collection. To find out more, search our online catalogue for the collection reference number indicated on screen. Digital copies of all the images are available to view online and download via the Welcome Collection. Follow the link and enter the search term shown on screen in the images search box. To find out more about medical illustration in general, we recommend Richard Barnett's book The Sick Rose, which features a number of images from the Pathology Illustration Collection and the Royal College of Physicians online exhibition on anatomical art under the skin. We hope you've enjoyed this video. You can find out more about Bart's Health Archives and Museums via the link below and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And while you're here, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great content.